hot on the last episode and um, we got that engine in which was good news. Welcome to Otto's Garage. We got the engine in last time as you probably saw um, but we did have to uh, take some of the suspension parts uh, off so we could get it clear and basically you can see as well the prop shaft hanging down under there so what I'm going to do now is uh, get that all assembled back together again and then we'll be uh, ready to drop it down onto our wheels I think. These are the front drive shafts which we uh, refurbed Oh, a long time ago, basically. They've been sat on the shelf for some time now. And we've basically got to get them in under there. So they're going to go into the back of the hub. And then at this end, they'll fix onto that um, drive shaft output out of the gearbox up there. Um, and it's exactly the same on the other side. So there might be a bit of waggling around to do with getting the uh, hubs in and out. But I don't think it's going to be a major issue because obviously everything's all kind of loose at the moment. When we've got the drive shafts in, then we'll be able to get these bolted back up to the underside of the chassis on both sides. There it is. We've got all of the link bars on. We've got the drive shafts back in. Um, we've got that hook mount at the back there in. And the same on the driver's side as well. Um, what I would say is with the hook mount, you're better off just loosening everything off, including the mount onto the gearbox, then aligning the holes in the body, and then when all the bolts are in, tightening everything back up again, it'll pull it right. That was a bit of a pig. And then this one on the little, um, the donut one here, that bolt goes right the way through the base plate, right the way up to the top plate on there. So I had to whip that one out um, and just put the, uh, put the bolt through the whole lot again afterwards. But otherwise she's pretty good. Uh, so I'm just gonna have a quick look at the prop shaft next and get that connected at the front onto the back of that diff. That's the uh, front wing uh, section that I've cut off an old panel. Um, and then basically I've shaped it up. This is for the other side. So that is basically going to form our rear arch and it's just got that little curve there to follow the wheel radius around on that point. So that's how we start. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to snip the front of this off and then um, I'm going to replicate that arch curve on this one and then basically we'll get it offered up and then we can, if it's about right, we can then tidy it up and flat all this crap off that's already on there. I'm doing a bit of painting now uh, on these panels. So I've got the uh, front bumper, the uh, bonnet, a couple of the wings uh, and the boot lid as well. So we're just giving them a coat of um, hybrid primer on there basically. Um, anyway, have a look and see what you think about it. So that's the back side of the bonnet with a coat of primer on it. I'm not going too crazy on the finishing there, obviously. Um, and then across here, we've got the bumper. So that was quite smooth, but I did have to kind of key it all down with some, um, I think I used some 140 or something like that on it, just to key it all off. And then um, these are the wings, they've all been keyed off as well. They just need a coat on there first. So I haven't done those ones yet, but I have done the boot over here. So the boot and the little wheel arch extensions for the back bumper. Um, so that's all good in there. And again, I'm not going to bother flatten off inside the boot there because that is going to be a waste of time. However, we do need to flat off the bumper and uh, obviously the uh, top side of the um, bonnet when that's flicked over. So I'll get those back wing, uh, sorry, the front wings done now and then uh, just have a quick cup of tea and then we can basically flick them over and do the other side of the bonnet and uh, see where we are with that. I haven't actually um, uh, filmed any of the spraying, we've done all that before, but in any event um, you can at least see now that we've got a good decent coat on uh, all of these parts. So they're all nicely primed up um, and the next thing to do once that's kind of gone off a bit, which it will do fairly quickly, is um, have a go at um, a little bit of sanding basically. So it's had some high build primer on it and it's 2K. So I'm 
So by 2K, they mean that it's uh, it's two pack. Um, so you put a hardener in with the um, with the main paint, and then basically uh, it'll chemically set rather than the old cellulose, which kind of dried. So it should be uh, ready for a bit of light sanding in not too long. I'm going to go and get some lunch. Oh, I think it might be chips. I've just given that the uh, first coat of the uh, Lancia 210 white. Uh, quite impressive really, considering it's outside. So that's the, um, the first coat that we've got, and it has got a nice gloss on it. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it 10 minutes just to go off. And then we'll give it another coat just when it's slightly tacky but um, yeah I know I shouldn't be spraying this stuff outside but uh, hey ho needs must sometimes and we haven't got any room inside so that's the end of that Well, it's not a dream machine paint job, but um, I'm pretty pleased with that. Considering that's a fiberglass panel, that's got a nice sheen on it. And the bumper as well. It's come up really well. A bit hard to tell in this light. Um, the sun's moved off us. But, um, now nah, I'll tell you what, come to the show and you can see for yourself. That's the easiest thing to do, isn't it? Just one quick top tip for you. When you're spraying, make sure you've got somewhere to hang the gun. So I basically just hooked a wire up from the ceiling and got it in there. Um, the is if you don't do that, you'll end up, uh, oh, excuse me, oh, that's the chips. If you don't do that, you'll end up uh, trying to balance the gun and everything and mess around with it. And of course it doesn't stand up by itself. It'll just fall over and piss paint out everywhere. So uh, just a coat hanger will save you a whole load of messing around. And that's with the top coat on. Uh, so that's the obviously the boot lid there. We've got ourselves a nice shine on that, which is cool. Uh, also done the wings. We'll just have a quick look at those. So again, they've come out quite well. And again, I've, you know, this has all been sprayed outside, so I'm quite pleased with how that's all come together. Um, the little fillers for the back wheel arches. And again, that's the other wing which is looking nice and the bumpers so the front bumper there and then uh, the rear one which had all of that filler work done to it and that's come up quite um, quite good really so we're going to get these fixed onto the car over the next couple of days and then we can just see exactly what um, what they look like all in one go I can't wait to get it outside under the daylight and just see what she's all like. But in any event, that's good news. Uh, there's only one other item which I'll show you. And that's the bonnet. And again, I'm quite pleased with that. You know, fiberglass panels, uh, I'm very pleased with how these have come on really. So that's good. We will give the whole car a bit of a buff up um, once, it, once all the panels are on there. But um, yeah. Looking good. So the next time that you see all of these panels, hopefully they'll be on the car. Well, it's time to put some of these panels back on the car um, because otherwise what I'm going to end up with is just getting them damaged because they're just flapping around in the workshop. Um, I've done the rear bumper already. And there she is. Um, so what I'm going to have a look at now is fitting the little... Um, vent arch extensions which just go down on the bottom underneath there so uh, i'm going to use my good old friend mr clico which we used in the early days and then basically uh, we are going to bond those on so i'll uh, show you that after i've done it. i probably won't be filming that because it's going to be a fiddly pain in the ass right let's take a look at those uh, rear arch extensions that we put on uh see what you think 
So basically, that is what we've got. And we've got our little vent at the back. And, um, well, it does the job. Um, let me know if you kind of recognise that shape. It's not what we originally were going to put on there. But it does do the job anyway. So, um, yeah, happy days. Uh, what I'm doing now is just a few um, bits and bobs of painting. We've got the, the doors off and also um, I've been spraying, you can't see it there, I'll just, just turn around this way a bit, been spraying the um, rear spoiler, like the gurney flap, the deflector on there. Um, these are the back C-pillar caps, the little vent caps that go on there. And then outside, we've basically got the doors and the rear spoiler. So I've sprayed the back side of those. Uh, the other side has all been prepped. So all I've got to do now, and that's gone off, is flip it over. And then basically, we will be able to spray the good side. And uh, following that, the only thing I need to do then is mask off the, um, you can see there, the, the frames. They're gonna have to be masked back and then we can spray this with some black satin. The resprayed front bumper there is back on the car, as is the radiator and the intercooler inside. Um, I've had to take the wings off because basically You've got to be able to get at these bolts so um but that's dead easy there's literally five i've put the bolt uh five bolts on for the wings that's dead easy to take them off a couple of little things inside i've sorted out the steady bar that's all on um and i've also clocked the turbo as well so um we've now got the outlet going straight up i've just taped these up basically for the show because we don't want any crud in there at the moment and i think probably what we'll do is we'll have to go across the front between the manifold and the radiator um i don't know whether i'm gonna have enough room to get down this side but we'll see anyway we'll see what we're um what we're looking at there because obviously we've got a lot of water pipes and stuff coming this way as well um so it may, it may be easier just to go across the front and just put a bit of heat protection on it and then basically it'll go through the intercooler and come out on this side um so that's the way to go obviously because it's hot anyway so it'll be hot going that way and cool coming up to there anyway that's for another day right we're gonna have a look at this um front windscreen uh i nipped down to see tank barrett and uh cosmo and ben down there uh during the week and um that was quite a nice little trip out really just to see some other um Lancers which were in various states of repair and stuff and some very nice machines Some of which I think he's taking to a couple to the uh, historic rally event that we're going to so we'll catch up with him there But the whole uh, purpose of the trip was to go and get a new front windscreen And There it is Amazing isn't it? It's a piece of glass. Anyway, long and short it is we've got to get this seal on the windscreen and we're going to have a go at sticking it in the front of the car. Oh, I tell you what, uh, good job we got these thumbs. I, um, uh, you got the rubber, which goes around the outside. Uh, wow, fitting that seal on the screen, you need some strong thumbs on that one. Um, it's a bit like trying to push a cat into a letterbox and it doesn't want to go in there, but there you go. Anyway, the long and short of it is that it basically is on so you get this get the seal on first and then what we've got to do if you have a look there's like a little little ledge here now this ledge here has got to have a piece of rope put in it or a piece of cord uh, and that's going to go all the way around because that is where the metal frame goes off the bodywork basically and of course that goes all the way around there are better videos on the internet of people fitting screens than I'm going to do, I'm quite sure. So I'm just going to press on, get it in there, and then I'll show you what it looks like, hopefully, when it's in. That's the cord I'm using. Uh, it's 4mm, and it's um, kind of for window blinds, I think it says on it. Um, where's the one? There you go. Blind cord. There you go. Anyway, um, 
I've got that in. What you've got to make sure is, of course, you don't choose a piece of weak string that's going to snap. That's what I was concerned about. So you can see I've got that in. Can you see? I'm hoping you can see. Let's go somewhere where we can actually see. There, you can see there, we've got that in the, in behind that rubber. And uh, that's got it. That's sort of right the way around. And then what you do at this end, this is the bottom of the screen. You've got one tail going one way and you've got the other tail going the other way. So they're crossed over. What I'm going to do there is just take those up on the glass so they're out of the way, basically, on the inside of the glass. It's positioned in place now. And um, what I've used is one of these vacuum suckers, which we use on... Uh, uh, for lifting ceramic floor tiles, so that's been ideal. I can just stick that on there. It just means you can give it a bit of a lift by yourself. But I've just offered that up into the aperture, and that looks like it's going to fit nicely. Uh, what we've got to do now is get inside and start to fiddle around with those two ropes there so that we can feed that rubber seal over the lip of the bodywork. Let's see how we go. It's going okay. I've got the bottom lip in. Um, I'm bloody glad I didn't put the dash in. The corners are quite tricky, but I've managed to get that round there. And you've got to kind of, you can't just pull the cord. You've got to kind of give it like a little bit of a circular motion as, you, as you're as undoing it. Um, like here is quite tight. And what I found is if you kind of, if you kind of pull it like that, it'll work its way over the seal slowly. When you get on the straight bits, it seems to be all right. But what I have got to do, you can see down here, the seals come out onto the outside, which is good. So I've just got this little doohickey. I'm going to just try and follow that and lever it up. I can. Uh, and just pull that, pull that seal out. So it needs to be out on the bodywork, thus. I'll probably just work my way along like that with it. Because that's stopping the screen from coming down if I can get that down, then we should be quite good for um, the top because obviously what will happen is, and you can see here, you can, you can just see the metal, it'll zoom in, you can see the metal edge there, just behind the rubber. Um, so the screen's like got to come down the car into the bulkhead here for the top to fit into it. I'll have a bit of a fiddle with that and then I'll show you what I've done. Well, it's in. And I'll tell you what, that was quite simple. Um, what tends to happen is once you've, once you've got the, um, the seal over it with the rope, you've then got a bang on the outside of the screen. And don't be too ginger, you know, I was giving it a good thump. And that kind of sits it back in and it makes the rubber spring back into place. And as soon as it springs up, you can see that it's you know it fully goes back to where it should be uh, but now we got ourselves a screen which is fabulous I'm rather pleased with myself it's the first time I've put a screen in uh, done it by myself and I tell you what within probably half an hour it's in, it's in it's dusted very simple way of doing it and of course um, we don't have any of those um, adhesives that they have on uh, modern windscreens now, so that does make it probably a little bit easier. Next job, rear screen. I've just been having a look at the, uh, the front grills on the um, bumper there. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to paint in there black because I've made these little grills, uh, which I think kind of fit in there like that anyway. Um, dead simple mesh. You can buy it in a full sheet. Got this from Car Builder Solutions. Uh, and then you just cut it to size, whatever you want. Anyway, I've made a pair of those down there. And... That's what she looks like when she's painted up. So that's just had a bit of satin in there. Obviously, I'll take all the tape off. That'll dry kind of... Uh, well, you're not really going to notice it, so it should um, it should blend in. But I offered the grill up before um, with white behind it. It just didn't look right. So I think with the black there and the grill on the front, 
that's going to look pretty good. Anyway, I'll spray that other side and we'll see what she looks like with the grilling plate. Well, it's another day and uh, we're looking at a bit of detailing, so um, I'll just show you what I've been doing. So basically, that's the back of those grills that we've got in. And that's looking quite tidy. Got the number plate on there as well. And the same on the other side. So I think that looks better than having the black grill with the white background behind it. Uh, I'm not sure what to do down here yet, whether we'll put a little grill in there maybe, I don't know. Um, but that might be for another day. Uh, the other thing that I've been looking at is the black surround on the door frames. So I've masked up all of the doors so that we don't get any black on the um, on the nice white paint that we've just applied. Uh, and um, unbelievably, I've had to fire the heater up this morning, although it is a half past seven in the morning. Uh, it is quite cold in the workshop, so I'm just trying to get a bit of warmth in here and then we can um, get those uh, black window surrounds done. I really want to get those doors fitted back on the car this afternoon. Right, here's a top tip for you. When you're doing masking up, get yourself a roll of this. So it's like a masking tape on one side and then on the other side, it's got a plastic sheet which unfolds and that means you can do this kind of stuff. So basically you've got the masking tape down here and then it just folds out and it'll basically just stop a bit of overspray. So where I'm just doing a local spray here, obviously I don't want it to go around uh, <clears throat> onto other bits of panel. So it just folds out and you can just tack it down and jobs are good and it saves loads of time. And of course, if you haven't got any uh, newspaper in there, a lot of people use newspaper, you get contamination off the, um, off the actual paper itself you know, dust particles. So um, that's great stuff, that is. Let's see what it looks like now then. So we'll get the masking off and we'll just see how it's kind of all gone. And then the last bits of little tape will tell us whether it has worked or not. Uh, that's one thing I would say is when you're masking up, don't press it all the way down and you know, it doesn't need to be. Just get the edge that you're painting against right because you want to be able to pull it off quite easily afterwards. Oh, we've missed a bit there, look. Never mind. Let me take that one out of the back. And now the bottom here. Caboosh. Happy days. I can soon clean that off up there anyway. So that's good. Little tip for you, uh, if you've got a socket and you're trying to put a bolt in it but the socket is too deep and the bolt disappears down it, just stick a nut in the end first. So you can see that in there, a little nut in there and then, let me just do this, basically the bolt won't disappear down because it'll bottom out on the nut and it means then that as you tighten it up uh, you'll be able to push it through. So that's a little tip there which works quite well. I don't know if you remember those uh, rear concentric hubs that we've got, basically this beast. Um, but what I found was when I was putting them on the car, uh, the corner of the hub was fouling on the brake caliper at the back there. So what I've done is I've turned, as you can see, just the corner off it, uh, and that's given us a little bit of clearance onto that back brake caliper. So I'll just show you what I mean on the car.
that's the edge we're talking about so basically because the concentric hub is bigger than the uh, the hub on the on the back it kind of sticks out a little bit each side it was just fouling on the uh, curve portion of the brake caliper so uh, I spun it in the lathe as you've just seen to take that corner off and basically this was the result it means now that we've got clearance between the concentric hub and the caliper so she's not binding on there and there's a good probably three or four mil in that corner there which has done the job following on from fitting the front screen we've got the back screen fitted as well this is the original glass off the prisma uh, i didn't realize it at the time but it's got a blue tint on it and that just matches perfectly with the front screen so that's great this one was a right bastard to fit and the reason being that on the front screen you put the bottom in first as you saw and then you pull the rope round and squeeze the top in we couldn't do that on this because there's kind of like a double lip uh, there's like a seal for the boot incorporated into the screen seal as well and what was happening every time we got the bottom in and then dropped the front across the bottom just popped straight out it needed three of us on it one on each side and one inside to pull the cords um, but basically we ended up putting the top in and working our way down and then across the bottom afterwards and just giving it lots of pressure and that seemed to do the job um, but it was um, eventful shall we say yeah but anyway she's in and the job's a good one door glass so we're not fitting uh, the original glass in basically we're going to put perspex or lexan whatever you want to call it uh, sorry polycarbonate uh, instead uh, now what i'm going to do is i'm going to fit it to this channel that goes around here basically and i've got some seriously good adhesive which will bond that on there um, the lower section here we're going to need to put a aluminium channel which will run over the inside and then what it'll do is it'll leave a four mil gap on this backside and there's just a little ledge down there you can see and that's where the Lexum will sit down on the polycarb um, other brands are available and in fact I'll take you over to it we've actually got Palson which is pretty much the same stuff it's all polycarbonate sheet uh, it comes in various sizes uh, this is actually a meter by 500 um, mill and uh, it, it's big enough to do one of the front doors so what I've done is I've taken a cardboard template off the door which basically will sit in something like that so you can kind of see how that's going to go in there and sit on the inside of that reveal all the way around um, and then we still got room here to get the mirror in as well there might be a bit of a tricky detail here where the mirror meets, but I'm going to have a look at that afterwards. Anyway, the long and short of it is that we've then transferred said template onto the piece of Palson. Palson! That always sounds cool, doesn't it? Palson. Uh, polycarbonate. And I've just drawn around it with a sharp E. And then on the back of that, we've now got ourselves the outline of what we need. With most things, you're best off using a cardboard template, and then you can just trim it a little bit at a time. If it goes tits up, you can wang it and get another piece of cardboard in. You don't want to be doing that with a piece of uh, final material that you're trying to match up. Obviously, that would get expensive. So, let's have a look at cutting it, and uh, there are various ways. Um, you can cut it with a jigsaw. Um, you can also cut it with a grinder, and that's what I'm going to try and do on this. Try. I'm going to succeed. Let's think positively. Okay, so the best way I found is get a fresh disc, and that is uh, like a metal stroke inox disc, uh, and it's one of those thin blade ones, which is great. Um, one thing I did forget to say is that on the Palson sheet, it will tell you that it's got UV protection on it, and you have to put it this printed side out, basically. That's the outside face. Obviously, this print, this um, comes off, and there's also a protective layer on the back side, which isn't printed. So you've got to make sure you get your handing right and have the printed side on the outside. Right. So just going back, I cut it, uh, put the sheet on a bit of MDF, and it's just overhanging. 
and then basically what it's meant is that I'm cutting in free air which I think was good when I first tried it I had it sat on the MDF it was burning this and it was just making a um, a bit of a state of the uh, it was melting the um, side of the board and just try it on an off cut first basically before you get too carried away then basically on the back side what it does is it just leaves this bit of residue here uh, and that may just snap off as you can see that's coming off okay like that or you can just run a knife down it absolute worst come to worst we can just put the linish in disc over it just to tidy that edge up so that is basically our basic form lots of words called basic going into this conversation but in any event that's what we've got and we'll tidy the edge up and then we can offer it up on the car now I've got those um, bits of the polycarbonate, I'll just show you what I mean with this um, fitting system that I've got on the inside of the door. So basically, we've got our factory up stand on the inside, and I've cut the piece of channel, the aluminium channel, which is basically going to fit. Go the other way around with it. That's going to fit in there. And then what it does is it forms that little channel down the back side, which the polycarbonate goes in. And we'll just do a blue peter and skip to the front door. So on the front door there, you can see I've riveted it on and it gives a nice finish to the top of the door for a start, but also it gives us our little channel down the back side and the polycarb sheet just drops in there nicely. So the next thing to do is um, clean up this door and we're going to drop the the plastic in there, if you like, the glass, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to bond it back to this edge. So all the way around there, it's going to be bonded on. Um, I don't really want to rivet it because it's so near to the edge. And I think if we stick a rivet in there, it is going to probably crack it. So we're just going to try bonding it on, uh, put a couple of clamps on it overnight and just see what it looks like. Um, rather than going too far down the road of putting lots of drill holes everywhere and then uh, it could look a bit of a state if it all cracks. So uh, let's get it in and we'll see what you can develop. You can see what I mean. The Pulsan glass uh, is a c The Pulsan windows, uh, they've all been cut out now. And we've basically got them to this shape and everything fits nicely in happy days bingo dingo however this is what's occurred so what i wanted to do was fit them with screws uh drill um if let's cut that there we're gonna i've drilled um fucking riv nuts in there basically into the frame but of course as soon as you put any kind of thread on it and any kind of like pressure onto it it bloody splits and it's got a lovely crack in that one there so this was the first one um this sheet i mean it looked great it did look good at first but um it kind of developed the cracks over time as well you know over about 10 or 15 minutes they suddenly got worse and worse Anyway, I can't do anything about that before the show. That's going to have to stay in. I will change it afterwards. But what I have done is I've changed my method and we are bonding them in. So I've put a, uh, a strip of sealant, black sealant in against the frame. We've clamped them back. The system down here works fine with the with the slot that we preformed. Uh, but I've got those all in there like that. I've done the one on the other side as well. That's what the clamps are up there so we've got the two back doors done <coughs> um, and I think I'll probably do the other front door uh, possibly tomorrow when they've gone off because I need to get access into there so I can put the dash in and I'm going to do that tonight basically this is a blue roll of um, paper so because that other window was cracking uh, we've bonded and this is how it goes in so what I've done is I've run up this edge of the door frame a seal of this is actually um, the dog's bollocks uh, it's like silicon stroke adhesive it isn't silicon based it's much more tacky than that it'll stick anything to anything basically and then uh, the glass goes down or the, the um, uh, 
pulse iron goes down into the groove that locates there and then you can see here as it touches the frame it basically hits on the adhesive and then what i'm going to do is clamp it at the top and then it will pull it all tight and we'll leave that for a few hours to set and there it is all clamped up um, quite important that obviously you don't put the clamp straight onto the perspex so we've got a bit of cardboard there these ones have got rubber um, and soft plastic clamps on so okay up there uh, but you can kind of see how when you clamp it down it pulls the adhesive through to the edge and what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal that edge up afterwards um, we have a look on the rear ones which we did last night you can see how that's all nice and firmly got it into that position what I might do afterwards is spray it with a thin layer of black paint all the way around the edge there and then you can't see any of these bits of adhesive and stuff like that but that's worked really well and uh, the thing I do like about it is the the long back window rather than having the the upright which you know you normally get uh, for an opening window of course it doesn't open so it doesn't matter but it gives it a nice coupe feel to it I feel so uh, liking that Right, we're getting the car out and we're trying to clear a path to the door because it has been full of rubbish. But back there, we've got the car. So basically, we're going to move all that crap out of the way and get the car so that we can polish it. Well, we thought we'd better give it a quick polish before the show, and uh, it's coming up nicely. I've got Jemima on it. You can see on the roof there where this side has been polished and this side's still got the polish on it. So that's... Uh, come up just how we want it really. Well here we are at the Historic Rally Festival at Western Park. Uh, got my friend Stan's parked his uh, Delta up next to it and um, we're getting a lot of interest. Which is cool. Just thought I'd shoot this at a quiet time because we've got some cars going around the track now and um, everyone's having a bit of a look over there. But um, it's getting some good feedback and worthwhile doing all that work on it. Well, we've just got back from the Historic Rally Festival, uh, which uh, created quite a stir. There were a lot, lot of interest. Uh, everyone asking, of course, when's it going to be ready? Uh, I've given myself a, another deadline that I'm going to try and get to the Easter meeting at Lowton Park Hill Climb uh, for the Hagley District Club next year. So that's our main target. Um, hopefully we'll see it running before then, but we've got a lot of electrics and some plumbing to do in the meantime. So um, anyway, uh, I didn't get a massive amount of footage from the show because it was absolutely ram busy, but um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode um, and I hope you've uh, enjoyed seeing the car in the flesh if you made it to the show. Um, and I'll see you on the next episode of Otto's Garage. Stay safe.